God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Telecast. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. And as the Lord lead, I'm before you to be used by him to share some very, very important information that we all need to know. This broadcast is not going to be for babes. It's not going to be for those that are half saved. It's not going to be for people who say, Lord, Lord, but don't live that way. It's not going to be for people who have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. This broadcast are for those that are fighting in the spirit, that are fighting against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. This broadcast are for those who use their weapons that are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. If you're an intercessor, then this broadcast is for you. If you're someone standing in the gap and praying extensively for someone or for something, this broadcast is for you. If you're a person who are, who's in the five-fold ministry and you're, you're trying to understand your gift, but you can't, and you need to go to God and you know you do, and you don't know how to reach him, how to get to him. This broadcast is for you. If you're a person who want to know who God is, you want to know, you want to understand his way, even though we will not always be able to understand his way. But if you at least want to try, to understand him and get close to him so that he reveal his way to you then this broadcast is for you and of course if you've been crying at night crying out during the day if you've been fasting denying yourself and praying on behalf of someone or yourself or on behalf of something this broadcast is for you I like to say to you that we'll be back right after this intro have your Bible and turn to the book of Daniel because that's one of the scriptures we're going to start at. God bless you and see you in a moment. This is another word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Outreach Ministry. Raw and uncut productions. Oh, perfect time for the word. God bless you. We're getting ready to get into a powerful word. I'm getting ready to do some study. Y'all want to study with me? Come on and let's, uh, let's see. You're watching the word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Irish Telecast, and I'm very grateful that you're here, okay? Um, you can reach the ministry by calling 475-300-3850. And thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the Word.
And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. Okay, praise the Lord, we're back. I hope you have your Bible and a paper to take notes and a pen or a pencil. If you don't have any of that, grab a crayon. If you are a sister and you got eyeliner pencils or something, just grab some chalk, it doesn't matter. Grab something to write with because you want to take notes on this. And our, our, our backdrop, this is very important. It's relative to the text. This is visual aid. So it's important that you pay attention to everything you're seeing on your TV screen. Turn to the book of Daniel, chapter 10. And we're going to start off with two verses. Chapter 10, verse 12. We're going to jump right into a conversation between Gabriel and Daniel. Verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand, and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. Now jump down to verse 20 and we're going to read two verses, verse 20 and 21. Then said he, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. But I will shew thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael, your prince. Now jump quickly over to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And what we're going to do is we're going to read six verses. Chapter 10, starting at verse 1. You have it? Okay. Now, I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am based among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience are fulfilled. The Lord is, excuse me, when your obedience is fulfilled. The Lord is telling me to go forward to verse 7. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ's, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ's, even so are we. Christ, meaning we belong to him. 
turn to Ephesians chapter 6 and we're going to read verses 12 through 18. Actually, I'm allowed by the Lord to start at verse 10 to go to verse 18. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, capital S, meaning the sword of the Holy Ghost, which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, capital S, the Holy Ghost, meaning those of us that are Holy Ghost filled with the biblical evidence of speaking in other tongues, not chanting, but speaking in other tongues. It's important to pray in the spirit often. Let me read verse 18 again. Praying always, see not sometimes, but always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, capital S, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Verse 19, throw that in there, says, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. The thought that the Holy Ghost has given me for this little talk is called pulling down strongholds isn't for amateurs. The title is, the fight is won when the answers come because there's no substitute for victory. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We come before you asking you to forgive us for our sins, for our shortcomings, for our faults and for our wrongs. Lord, some of us are fasting. Some of us are just simply praying. I ask you, Lord, to fill me with the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Give me a spiritual understanding of your word. Bless us right now, this late, late night hour, to come before you, to hear from you, to discern what you are saying. Sharpen our gifts, intensify them, magnify the anointing on our lives. Impart wisdom unto all of us that we should understand this battle that we're in, this fight that we are in. And I ask, Lord, that you just lead us in prayer after the meat of this lesson is served, the platter, the side orders, the beverage. And Father, just lead us 
in prayer then that we may rebuke the devil that we may get the victory that thou has promised us many of us are watching you many of us have our eyes set on you many of us that have read the scriptures and still read the scriptures we're holding you to your word no one can do what you do no one can bless like you bless no one can open doors like you open doors no one can speak a word with everyone and everything obeying them but you you know our beginning you know our end you know how our lives are going to turn out we ask you father to have mercy on us since we don't know we are not infinite but we are finite we are not limitless but we are limited we don't put no confidence in the flesh nor do we put confidence in our own selves but our faith our confidence is in you. Now talk to us. You said men ought to always pray. Well, that's a two-sided conversation with you. We're putting out our part now. We're asking you to respond. Thou hast said unto me, you are standing on holy ground. Take off thy shoes. Not just me, but to my brethren and my sisters that are in the ministry. Right now, wherever we are, we take off our shoes, for we are standing on holy ground. We dare, we dare not tread on holy ground with dirty feet. We come before you, asking you. Holy Ghost to talk to you. Use your apostle as a prophet this early morning. Tell me what to say and it will be said. Please and talk to me also. Minister to You said there's no substitute for victory. And that's what we're waiting for. Victory. So help us and strengthen us. Those of us that are on a fast, like you have me right now, strengthen us as we're fasting. <laughs> we are denying ourselves things that we desire that our spirit man may get close to you and tap into you we are fasting for people places or things some of us also fasting for ourselves so we're asking you father to hear us to bless this fast to be successful is not over until the angel comes with the answer. So while there's angels and demons fighting in the heavenlies, help us to stand on our post and not to get off, not one inch, until the blessing comes. We have a praise that's boiling up inside of us, that's ready to come out. But Lord, when you move, when you answer, when you bring our prayer list down to zero, meaning when everything has a check next to it, saying that you have done what you said you're going to do, we will praise you. Oh, we'll praise you. 
will praise you. Have mercy. In Jesus' mighty name. We thank you and we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. In the book, of Second Corinthians, chapter ten, verses one through six. Brother Paul was telling the brethren at Corinth that many of them say that he is bold when he's away from them. I have nothing written, so I'm listening to the Holy Ghost as he gives me his response to the prayer. He told them in verse 1, Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you, He said, when I'm with you, I'm gentle. You might look at me and say, wow, he's soft. Then he said, in verse 2, but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. In this world, okay, God said go this way. There are a lot of ministers who have taught the people that listen to them into believing that once you give your life to Christ, your life becomes easy. And that God will answer your beck and call as soon as you give it. The truth of the matter is, that is not always true. I often say and have said at different speaking engagements over the years and the congregations always look at me strange except for those that understand what the Lord is leading me to say when he leads me to say these words. Before I met Jesus, life was easy. I didn't have to pray about anything. I didn't have to fast about anything. I didn't have to be conscious about how I walked. I could talk any way that I want to. I could use any kind of language I want to. I could smoke cigarettes and weed or drink if I wanted to. 
Before I met Jesus Christ, the sky was the limit. I can do whatever I wanted to because it was all about me. Back in 1990, when an older prophetess who has since then left this world, when she said to me in 1990, I was 24 years old. She said, Alan, God said he's going to use you to teach and preach the word of God. Now, my grandfather was a prophet and a pastor and a powerful teacher of his time. My great-grandfather was also a prophet. And God used him as pastor. And I used to listen to my mother tell us, uh, whenever we was around, but she would tell me for sure, about how when she was a little girl, she would watch my great-grandfather and other people that would come by the house in the Carolinas, the North Carolina, and they would talk about the Bible. So I come from a long line of ministers. I have many cousins that have got into the ministry. Some called, some not. Being that the Lord blessed me to come from a long line of ministers and being raised in the house where every Sunday my mother took us to service and she also formed a community choir as the Lord led her to. And me and my brother, one of my brothers that's 11 months younger than me, and my baby sister, us three at the time, used to always play church at home, like little kids do. I must have been about nine or eight. And we would play church, and I would be the preacher as we called it then, my brother would be what would be recognized as a deacon. He was just, you know, there. he was there. He was, all three of us played and had service and would sing. And my sister would be the choir all by herself. <laughs> I didn't know, and there was no way I could have known that how God was allowing us to play then would speak volumes over what our life would be like later. My sister now is an evangelist. She has the evangelistic calling on her life. My brother he respects the fact that there's a God. He also come from a family, because he's my brother, where the name of the Lord is, was mentioned. And my sister, she picked up the torch that my mother carried. My mother's a singer. She's always sang. And my sister, as she was growing, started singing as well. So much so that a lot of times when she's singing, she sounds like my mother. She will put you in the mind of my mother and can sing like my mother can sing. That's a gift on our family. I have a cousin named Maria that will be way up there hitting notes and things. We all on my mother's side of the family have the gift of singing, the majority of us. And here I am now in ministry. It was reconfirmed when I got older. And like I said, when I was 24 and the Lord 
use a prophetess to pull me aside and tell me, Alan, God said, you're going to be teaching and preaching the gospel. Now, I, I didn't know what that really meant. Because when you're not in Christ, or when you're a baby in Christ, or when you just have heard of Christ, but you don't really know him, when somebody say the gospel, you just think Bible. And, and you don't know how deep the scriptures are until the Lord blesses you to start spending time in the scripture. So when she said that to me, I couldn't see it. Because at that very moment, I was getting ready to go upstairs to my apartment. I was waiting for a girl to come over. I also had a bag of weed in my pocket and a 40 ounce of beer, well actually a quart of beer because they didn't make 40 ounces at that moment. So I had a quart of beer in my hand, in a bag of course, because I respected the collar that she wore and the anointing on her life and how she carried herself. Her name was Dr. Wilson. I respected her. But when she told me, God said, and I mean, I was on my way upstairs. I was walking, minding my business. And Dr. Wilson said, Alan, come here for me. She lived right next door to me at the time. And she said, God said. Now, that part right there, there's a lot of people that will tell you that God said. And most people, when they hear those two words, God said, they forget somewhere along the course of their journey that it was told to them that God said. So because they have forgotten, if it doesn't come to pass, then they don't pay no attention. They don't hold those words up high, God said. But when she told me this, now I watched my mother as I was growing, following the Lord, when there was a hurricane in 77, I remember my mother uh, having us, me and my brother and sister, uh, uh, by her bedside, praying. Lights out, candle lit, praying. I remember there was times when we grew up in the project, so there was times when we might not have had the best of meals for breakfast, and my mother would say, well, she would make biscuits and pork and beans for breakfast. Some of y'all don't understand that eggs and spam or oatmeal or cream of wheat I used to love and still love cream of wheat but when you grow up in the projects there's some things some hardships that you face that it, 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 it prepares you for the struggle in life so there were times me being the oldest of my mother's four children that I would watch her and I would see how my mother exercised great faith when we did go through certain struggles, my mother would say, God is going to provide. So that was my point of reference when it came to God. His resume was often spoken of by my mother. Okay. So when Dr. Wilson said to me, as the Lord led her, that God said, you're going to be teaching and preaching the gospel. I said, okay. And then when she let me go, I went on about my business and carried on what I had planned already for that night. But it wasn't too long after that. I'm talking about in a matter of months. Because at the time I was working at a hospital. And not too long after that, I hurt my back on the job. And so then I had to, I was in and out of work, in and out of work, until finally the following year, I was just taken off the schedule because I couldn't work and carry out the type of work I was doing, which was patient care, transporting patients, lifting patients, bringing patients to tests, bringing dead bodies to the morgue and all of that. It was, a, and at the time, walking all over this big hospital, it was a, it was a very, uh, a, 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 I had a very adventurous job, and it was very physical. And at the time, I, I also was teaching martial arts 
So I, I, I was very active. But when I hurt my back, that stopped a lot of things. So now I started facing hardship. Hardship. I started saying to the Lord, I had got to a place that things had got so rough when you have exhausted all of your monies that you've saved, when now you're standing there empty. No one is coming around. The woman I was involved with, I got to see she wasn't at all the type of woman I thought she was. So it's like my life turned. And I didn't understand what was going on. I started going through things and it seemed like things were getting worse and worse and worse. In the beginning, the landlord was like, oh, it's all right. You know, you, you hurt your back. Uh, you got a lawsuit. Everything will be fine. But then as time went on, then the landlord started being a little more demanding. Brother, you got to do something. You have to give me something. So now here I am between a rock and a hard place. My father's mother, my grandmother, she was alive at the time. So sometime I was able to get away and just go to her house and eat and spend time there. And she saw what I was going through. She would help me out a little bit along the way. But as far as having a whole bunch of family run to you and say, do you need help? That didn't happen. So I started learning something about life, people, and circumstance. And I didn't know what I was going through and why. So from 1990, when the word was shared with me, the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge of what God was going to be using me to do, in 1994, there was so much that happened at an accelerated rate that trials, Tribulations, problems, hardships pushed me toward God. And then there was a time almost halfway that things were so rough. And I had one box of macaroni and cheese that I had to be able to fix, to have a meal. But I noticed something. I never had to open that box. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. Halfway through, almost halfway, through that four-year period, I say, uh, after Dr. Wilson was used by God to share that with me, maybe the next, the ending of that year or close to the next year, I remember it was on a New Year's Eve, around that time, or right before then, toward the closing, probably the closing of 1990, I think, Lord forgive me if I'm wrong, I said unto the Lord, by 91, mm -hmm, Lord, if you provide for me like you did for my mother. I will serve you the rest of my life. I didn't know what I was saying. I said what I thought to say, but I didn't know it wasn't a thought. It was actually an inward unction causing me to make a vow that I had to keep and I'm glad I did. As I said, I never had to open that macaroni and cheese because from that moment on, even though the heat got turned up, even though things got worse, I was always brought through 
and didn't know how. When I was a little kid, my mother had got me baptized. But through these hardships and trials, I ended up, like I said, saying to the Lord, if you provide for me and take care of me like you did my mother, I'll serve you all the days of my life. Then I started going to service at the ministry that my family was at, that we grew up in. It was a Baptist ministry. I started going there. I started attending more. I started, I, I wasn't going there to, to fellowship with family and hang out with family. That's not why I was going. I was going because at the root of my upbringing, there was the name of a way maker. And I needed to find out who he was. So I was led by him. I'll make a long story short. I was led by him to give my life to him. And then he started teaching me. Then I started growing. Then it came a season where the Lord, not too long after that, blessed me to get baptized on my own free will. No one had to talk me into it. No one had to grab my hand and walk me up when the doors of the church was open. When the altar call came. I went. Because see, by now, there was, there was some satisfaction going on in my life. Though there was a bunch of chaos around me. There was a friendship that I had entered into. It's nothing like when God becomes your friend. Right before I got ready to be baptized, I used to be a DJ also. So I was listening to some old tapes I had. I was going through some tapes. And my father had died in 87. So here it was now in 91. And I was going through some tapes looking for a specific tape with my a cassette tape, some of y'all know what that is, with my father's voice on it, because I just wanted to hear my father's voice. I just I, I, I just, you know, wanted to hear his voice. I couldn't find the tape, but there was a tape I ran across that looked like the tape. It was the same brand, same color. And I put it in, into my cassette player. And when I did, there was a voice, a minister. I don't know who it was. But I heard the minister say these words. When you go down in that water, make sure that you're serious. Because you may just meet God in that water. And I said, whoa. By now, I've been going to the new members meeting at the ministry. I've been going every Sunday. I've been going to Bible study and all of that. So, I, 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 as far as I knew, I was pretty much in a, in a comfortable place. Because now, I was learning about God. Well, when I heard them words on that tape, it made me think. And I didn't feel guilty about anything because at that time my life was even worse. It was more organized, but there was a lot of lack in my life at the time. And then the Lord did something. He blessed me to go to an unemployment office and to tell them my situation and that I got hurt on the job and I'm out because of that. They said, well, you should have came here last year when you got taken off the schedule, but we'll, we will uh, 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 apply for medical unemployment. And I was like, okay. Needless to say, within two months, the mailman came to my house and me and my brother were living together and he said to my brother, I need to speak to your brother. When I came downstairs, he handed me seven 
yellow envelope. And I went upstairs. Now, I'm wearing hospital scrubs because I had no clothes. That's how much lack it was. I was wearing a wild afro. It was neat, though, but it was a wild afro. I, I went upstairs. I opened one envelope. And it was a check from, social, from uh, unemployment. I said, wow, this is about $178. I said, praise the Lord. Now, with $178, when you have stuff, $178 is nothing. But when you don't have anything and you've been going through lack and struggling and all of that, that $178 seemed like a lot. So anyway, I was grateful. I opened another envelope, $178. Another one, $178. I'm like, oh my goodness, and I just dropped to my knees and began to praise God. I went and put some envelopes in my dresser and asked my brother to walk to the bank with me. And I told him I'd give you $50 to walk to the bank with me, and he did. And my life turned around right then. Because I learned that when you... When you give your life to the Lord, when you give your life to Him, when you trust Him to be your Savior, <laughs> that He opens doors and makes ways for you that never otherwise would have opened. Not only that, but I found that when you go through hardship and when everything in life has turned against you nine times out of ten when you look there you're standing alone there's no one with you so it kind of shapes your character see some of you understand when you have nothing, there's nobody there. But as soon as God bless you, here come everybody. So you develop a hardness. You, you put up a wall. And you say, you wasn't there at the hardest time in my life. So why are you here now? There's some people that they, they can be bought. Meaning... The leeches come and people be, I want to be accepted. I have it going on now. Here, here, here. And to some people, that's what it takes for them to realize that the people only was coming around you because you had. But there's some of us that when we were going through, we were checking names and faces and realizing I'm in this trial alone. And then when God brings you out, you develop tough skin. You don't regard man. You don't hold nobody up but God. Why? Because when you needed someone, he was there. He was there early in the morning when you woke up and had your devotion. He was there late at night. When you got ready to close your night and you talked to him and thanked him for what he done for you during that day as you were reflecting. He was there when you was going through the hard times and the no times and the have nothing times. He was there. When everybody else looked down on you because you had no clothes, because you wasn't stylish, God still was there. Okay. Let me go fast forward. By 1993, I was watching a TV show. A local minister was teaching. And by this time now, I had started taking notes. I had got into another relationship. From that time that I just told you about, up until this time I get ready to tell you about, there was a, a gap where I fell. I got a job DJing in a club. I started smoking weed again. I even started selling weed, pounds of weed. And so what happened is when God blessed my life, 
for a while I was grateful, but then I fell because there wasn't no more hardship and everybody was welcoming me. People that wasn't looking at me were looking at me now. Okay. One night at the club on a Thursday night in 1993. The apartment me and my brother had, the landlord lost it. My brother moved in with a woman he ended up marrying. I ended up meeting a woman at the club that I was chasing for many years and I ended up moving in with her. And then when the landlord lost the house, we already had these other uh, roofs, so to speak, to settle under. So I, I, I went and got my stuff and brought it to her house and fixed her apartment up. And I was still DJing at the club. But there came a Thursday night when I noticed something. There was an inward unction to leave the club and not come back no more. And I left. The next night, I didn't go in to DJ. There was a main DJ there. He was letting me get down and I, I outmixed him anyway. But he was paying me, but then after a while the money got funny. So now I'm mixing Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And he started off paying me good. Now he, he wasn't paying me good, but I'm doing all the work. And people are telling me, man, you should get rid of that guy and you should be the DJ here because you tearing things up. I, I don't know if he knew he was corny. I did, so did everybody else. But anyway, I got tired of that. And it's like God opened my eyes and I began to see I've disappointed my friend. My friend, God. So I didn't, I didn't give no speech. I didn't say goodbye. I didn't say, see you later. I took my records and everything that I brought there, bought them home, and I left the club. The next night, I was walking by there about 12 midnight, 1 in the morning, going to get me a sub from a store down the street. And I walked on the other side of the street on purpose. And when I saw all these people come out the club because the club was letting out, they was loud and drunk and cussing and all. I said, oh my goodness, I was like that? Sometimes it takes you to step out of your comfort zone for, and, and then look at it and see that there really was no comfort there. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care <laughs> till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. All that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus. I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food for my table. I'm glad, I'm glad I know. Someone. And it told me